Today is the day. After months of prep and waiting for the bees to do their stuff, we're finally making honey. Bees gotta have my honey. <laughs> Cut the caps off, saving the honey and the wax. Then we'll put them in here, which will spin it down. There's room for two frames. Then I'll go collect the honey down here, put it over there, filter it, and then we'll put it in the jars. Sounds All done. Let's do it. So we're now going to go check on the hive and remove the shade from on top of it before we start harvesting the frames and uh, it's very important to suit up before you do this. Okay, so we've taken the top off of the hive and Tani is using peppermint oil extract instead of smoke to calm the bees. Now we're going to take... Now we're going to take the top and use Be Quick to get them out of the honey soup. Yeah. How do you feel? You know, it goes against everything. You're hot. <laughs> Stay still. Yeah. We're being, you know, headbutted by bees. Not to worry though, the guard bees mostly just headbutt you before they ever sting you. One of the things you can notice right away is how much the bees hate the camera. And it's because the camera is dark. Bees are naturally more aggressive to things that are dark because their predators are that color. Bears, skunks, and raccoons. This is why the beekeeper's outfit is traditionally white. It calms the bees and reminds them that you're not a threat. Bee Quick is a spray of essential oils that drive the bees from the honey super down farther into the hive. Once the bees evacuate the honey super, it's time to open it up and see what the honey haul is for the year. Wow. That, that's some honey. That's the good goods right there. Bees mix flower pollen with water to create honey. The hive is broken up into a brood box where they create new bees, a honey box where they'll store honey for the winter, and then two honey supers on top. Beekeepers only take honey from the honey supers, leaving the main honey box for the bees to eat throughout the winter. Once we extract the honey frames, we brush the bees off of them and place them into a Tupperware, which we will then drive to the garage so that the bees don't follow us home, because they're none too pleased about this. We seal the hive back up, leave the ladies to their business, and get down to what we all came here for. We used an electronic hot knife to cut the caps off the honeycomb. Afterwards, we place the frames in a centrifuge, which spins the honey out onto the sides, where it drips down to the bottom, and then can be poured out through a spout. And you can see the difference after you've spun a frame. With honey, and without. Yay. With, I'm gonna get a without. I'm gonna. It's supposed to be 85 degrees when you harvest your honey, so that you get decent flow from it. Uh, and it's probably gonna heat up that hot today, but just in case we got some space heaters in the garage to encourage the flow. Once we extracted the raw honey, we poured it through two different types of filter, basically just to get the little pieces of wax left over out. Mm -hmm. 
We repeated the process over and over again until we got the final haul. Right over here, we took the wax tops that we got off of the uh, frames and we're putting in a crock pot and we'll separate the honey from the wax. We'll let it cool in the fridge and we'll get the wax off to make these wax whatever. All that was left was to pour it into jars. That's so nice. Now that our job was done, the bees had one last thing to do. We placed the frames back outside by the hive and within moments, a foraging bee discovered it, went back and reported to the others what they had found. The girls will come back out, strip down the frame of all the remaining honey and wax and take it back into the hive for winter.